There are stories so incredible that they make you want to listen until the very end without even realizing it. Among them, the story of the diamond stands out as a fascinating journey where nature and humanity meet. Each precious stone is not just a shiny jewel placed on a ring or displayed in a showcase, it is the trace of a journey that began billions of years ago in the very depths of our planet. By discovering this unique adventure together, you will understand why this mineral became far more than a simple luxury item. And believe me, what you are about to hear is worth following all the way to the very end. The highest price ever paid for a diamond exceeds $71 million. With such an amount, you could buy more than 10 luxury house, reserved for the global elite. Yet it is not only the price that makes this gem so extraordinary. It is its exceptional formation, its nearly unmatched hardness, and its history so deeply tied to that of humanity. A diamond is born in conditions that few things on Earth could ever withstand. Buried more than 200 kilometers beneath the Earth's crust, in a zone called a mantle, carbon is subjected to pressures and temperatures so extreme that its structure transforms, giving birth to one of the strongest materials we know. Understand this, without that rare combination of pressure and heat, carbon does not become a diamond, but instead turns into simple graphite, the soft material in pencils. It is this rarity that gives the stone its immense value. After millions of years underground, some diamonds were pushed closer to the surface by ancient volcanic eruptions. They became trapped in special rocks, known as kimberlites. And that is where humans began their quest, searching the earth for treasures formed long before our species even existed. But before going any further, take just a second to do something simple that makes a huge difference. Hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Why? Because what you are discovering here is only part of this extraordinary journey, and by subscribing you'll be sure not to miss the next equally fascinating stories. Now that this is said, let's continue our journey into the heart of the diamond. The exploration begins long before the first blow of a pickaxe. Geologists use satellites, gravity sensors, and magnetic instruments to detect anomalies that might indicate the presence of deposits. Sometimes a single fragment of kimberlite found in sediments is enough to trigger a full expedition. When a site is confirmed, massive open pit mines are dug, carving huge spirals into the earth that can go down hundreds of meters. In other cases, when the diamonds lie too deep, underground mines are built. These tunnels descend up to 800 meters below ground, where heat and humidity make the work even more grueling. And yet, all this effort is for just a few tiny stones. On average, more than 250 tons of rock must be processed to obtain a single carat, a stone barely larger than the tip of a pencil. After the explosions that break the rock, blocks are transported to gigantic crushers capable of grinding even granite. But beware, despite their hardness, diamonds are also brittle, a poorly placed shock can shatter them into worthless fragments. That is why crushing force must be calibrated with extreme precision. Once the blocks are reduced to fragments, the next step is washing. Large rotating drums, high-pressure water jets, and vibrating screens clean away the mud and dust. The resulting material is called concentrated ore. This is where modern technology steps in. X-ray scanners detect the unique glow emitted by diamonds when exposed. In just a fraction of a second, a burst of compressed air ejects the gem from the rest of the flow. This method allows diamonds to be recovered with amazing precision and almost no loss. Then comes the sorting stage. Rough diamonds are classified by their size, shape, clarity, and color. Some will enrich luxury jewelry, others less perfect will be used in industrial tools where only their hardness matters. But for those destined to become jewels, the journey continues. Each stone is analyzed with 3D scanners revealing its internal flaws and the way it reflects light. Specialized software then calculates the best way to cut the stone. Sometimes a large diamond is divided into smaller ones to avoid flaws. Others, rare and pure, are left intact to become unique pieces. Cutting begins with powerful lasers, able to separate the stone along its most fragile lines without breaking it. Then, 
Artisans use diamond-coated wheels to polish each facet. Only a diamond can polish a diamond. Every angle, every surface must be calculated with mathematical precision, because it is the perfect geometry of the facets that creates the famous sparkle. The process can take weeks, but the result is a jewel that shines with an intensity nothing else can imitate. Once polished, the diamond goes to specialized laboratories such as the GIA or the IGI. There it receives an official certification specifying its weight, color, clarity, and cut. A unique code is engraved with a laser on its girdle. This code, invisible to the naked eye, guarantees its authenticity on the world market. At this stage, the stone can finally join the jewelry workshops. There, prestigious houses such as Cartier, Tiffany, or Harry Winston craft the metal to create pieces that enhance the stone. A diamond is never alone, it is always accompanied by a setting shaped by human hands. But behind this dazzling side lies a darker reality. In certain regions of Africa, notably Sierra Leone, Angola, and the Central African Republic, men, women, and even children still mine diamonds by hand. In the mud without protection, sometimes under the control of armed groups, they dig for stones that will finance deadly conflicts. These stones are called blood diamonds, because they are paid for in human suffering. A jewel that can light up a glamorous evening sometimes hides a story of misery and violence. That is why traceability has become crucial. Knowing where a stone comes from allows us to choose not just an object of beauty, but also a more responsible symbol. And yet, the story of the diamond does not end there. Thanks to advances in science, it is now possible to create synthetic diamonds. With technologies like HPHD or CVD, researchers reproduce in laboratories the same conditions as in the Earth's mantle. The result is a stone identical in chemistry and appearance to a natural diamond. Some companies go even further by transforming the ashes of departed loved ones into commemorative diamonds. A moving blend of science and emotion that allows a memory to be kept forever. Thus, the diamond is both natural and now also human, a stone at the crossroads of two worlds. When you look at a diamond, you don't just see a jewel. You see a story, that of the earth, that of humanity, that of a symbol we ourselves have filled with meaning. A decisive turning point came in 1947, when De Beers launched the famous phrase, a diamond is forever. That slogan was not just a marketing success, it transformed the world's perception of diamonds. Since then, offering a diamond ring has become a universal ritual associated with eternal love. Entire generations have grown up with the idea that a diamond was not just a stone but a promise. Even today, the fascination continues. Whether at international auctions, in luxury jewelry stores, or in laboratories creating the diamonds of the future, this stone retains its unique status. The diamond is at once natural and cultural, scientific and emotional, precious and sometimes controversial. It is this contrast that makes it so captivating. So the next time you see a diamond sparkle, remember it is the fruit of an incredible journey, from the burning depths of the earth to the cold light of a showcase. And that journey deserves to be known, because behind every sparkle lies a story that connects geology, science, art, and humanity. If you enjoyed this story and want to discover more, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and activate the bell. Stay until the end, because what awaits you in the next videos will be even more impressive and just as fascinating. Every year, the glass industry transforms mountains of sand into more than 150 million tons of crystalline products. Imagine an entire city built only with the glass produced in a single year. Windows that insulate us from the outside world while flooding our spaces with natural light. Fiber optics that carry data at the speed of light. Glass is a discrete but fundamental pillar of our modern civilization. But how do we manage to transform sand into objects that are so pure, strong and versatile? Today, we're exploring a glass factory where science and ingenuity unite to turn the ordinary into the extraordinary. It all begins with a meticulous selection of raw materials. 
quartz sand must reach a purity of over 99% to avoid unwanted coloration. It is extracted from specialized quarries and processed into fine uniform grains. Next, sodium carbonate, also known as soda ash, is added to lower the melting point from 2300 degrees Celsius to 1500 degrees Celsius, saving vast amounts of energy. Limestone, calcium carbonate, provides essential chemical stability. Finally, recycled glass, called cullet, completes the recipe, improving fusion while reducing energy consumption. These materials are stored in massive silos, then precisely weighed by computer systems and mixed in powerful industrial blenders. The result is a homogeneous powder called a vitrifiable batch. This powder is fed into a gigantic furnace where temperatures rise above 1,600 degrees Celsius. The mix melts into a viscous, honey-like glowing liquid. It remains molten for 24 to 50 hours, allowing for homogenization and the elimination of trapped gases. At this stage, the molten glass is ready for forming. For flat glass, the float process is used. The glass is poured onto a bath of molten tin in an inert atmosphere, where it floats and naturally spreads, forming a perfectly smooth sheet. Thickness is controlled by extraction speed, ranging from a few millimeters to several centimeters. To produce containers like bottles, IS machines are used. The molten glass is cut into precise gobs, reheated to about 1100 degrees Celsius, then blown or pressed into successive molds. Each piece takes its final shape with compressed air, and these machines can produce up to 700 objects per minute. But at this stage, glass is still fragile due to internal stresses from uneven cooling. It must pass through an annealing furnace called a layer, where it is first reheated and then cooled very slowly. This annealing process makes the glass stable and strong. Once cooled, the solid glass is cut with diamond discs or carbide wheels guided by lasers. The edges are polished, and each piece undergoes strict quality control. High-definition cameras and laser sensors inspect every surface for the slightest defect. Imperfect pieces are immediately recycled as cullet. Some glass is then tempered, a heat treatment that makes it up to five times stronger. This type is ideal for showers, tables, or car side windows. Others are coated with metallic layers to produce mirrors or heat reflective glass. And so, simple grains of sand become technological and architectural objects, from modest bottles to towering glass facades. Glass embodies our industrial genius. But its greatest strength is its infinite recyclability. Glass can be recycled endlessly without losing its purity or properties. Every time you throw a bottle into a recycling container, you contribute to a virtuous cycle that saves resources, cuts energy consumption by 30%, and reduces greenhouse gas emissions. Glass isn't just a material, it's a shining example of sustainability. Asterisk. So next time you hold a glass object, take a moment to think about its incredible journey. Have you ever wondered how airplanes are made? They are among the most complex machines ever created, and their manufacturing process is a true feat of engineering. Airplanes have revolutionized transportation, trade, and even warfare, enabling the rapid movement of people and goods across the globe in just a few hours. In this video, we'll dive into the airplane manufacturing process and explore how they are designed, built, and tested. You probably know that the first airplane was invented more than a century ago by the Wright brothers. Since then, airplanes have evolved tremendously, just like the technology and materials used to build them. We'll take a closer look at the design phase, materials, manufacturing processes, as well as assembly and testing. Whether you're a frequent traveler or simply passionate about engineering, this video will give you a detailed look at how airplanes are made. So, fasten your seatbelt and get ready to take off with us into the world of aerospace manufacturing. The design phase is the starting point. Engineers and designers work together to create airplane blueprints, taking into account aerodynamics, weight distribution, and safety. This step is crucial, any mistake can have serious consequences later on. One of the most important aspects is aerodynamics. 
Engineers use computer simulations and wind tunnels to test and improve the design so the plane can fly efficiently and safely. They must also consider weight, balance, engine placement, and materials. Famous models like the Boeing 747 or the Airbus A380 stand out with unique features, the 747 with its iconic hump on the upper deck, and the A380 with its full double-deck design, offering more seating and reduced passenger noise. If you find this content interesting, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you won't miss future tech explorations. Advances in computer technology have revolutionized aircraft design, allowing precise 3D modeling with CAD software. These models are tested virtually before any physical construction begins. In short, this phase creates the detailed blueprints that serve as the foundation for the rest of the manufacturing process. Once the plans are finalized, manufacturing can begin. The materials must be strong, lightweight, and resistant to extreme conditions such as high altitude or temperature changes. Common materials include aluminum, titanium, carbon fiber composites, and high-strength alloys. The manufacturing process varies depending on the component, fuselage, wings, engines, or landing gear, and the materials used. For example, wings can be made from extruded aluminum or from carbon fiber composites cured in molds. A major breakthrough has been the introduction of robotics and automation. Robots perform repetitive tasks with precision, such as drilling and placing thousands of rivets on the fuselage. Digital systems control and monitor the entire process to ensure compliance with safety standards. Once the components are complete, they are carefully assembled to form a full airplane. The fuselage serves as the base, to which the wings, engines, landing gear, and electrical and hydraulic systems are attached. During assembly, safety tests are performed to ensure everything meets standards. The wings must be perfectly aligned, flight controls functional, landing gear able to withstand stress, and engines powerful enough. Once assembled, the aircraft undergoes flight tests simulating various conditions, takeoff, cruising, and landing. Data is collected to identify potential issues and improve design or manufacturing. Airplane manufacturing is a precise, demanding, and highly technological process. Thanks to advancements in materials, robotics, and digital systems, airplanes have become safer, more efficient, and more sustainable. Every step, from design to flight testing, is subject to rigorous controls to guarantee optimal performance. And with the constant evolution of technology, the airplanes of tomorrow will be even more efficient and environmentally friendly.